God is always speaking. Are we listening? And uh, again, years ago, I came across people that said to me about uh, um, stirring up these gifts. You, you, you don't stir it up, brother. God's not always speaking. And I thought to myself, I don't think that lines up with the word of God. And so whenever you come across a statement that you're uncertain about, go to your concordance, start to find some words and find some scriptures that link with that. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Jesus himself said, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Now, in the Bible, um, there are a number of tenses that we don't use a great deal in English nowadays. And the word proceedeth is the present continuous tense. And so it means it's true now and it continues to be true. And so a good example of that is a river. A river starts to flow and then it continues to flow. So this word proceedeth means there's a word that came right at the beginning, let there be light. And ever since there has been words flowing from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. And there will always be words flowing from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. There's a revelation that you need to catch there. And it says, man does not live on bread alone. If you want to live, you need to be getting your rhema word every day. If you've had your breakfast, you've had some physical food, what spiritual food have you had that's come direct from the throne of God today that is absolutely fresh bread? Hallelujah. And every one of us, you can receive that bread, and it could be a different word for each one of us because it's specific to you and your circumstances. That's what a rhema word is. And so you need the rhema word today and every day so that you can live. And there's a difference between existing and living. There are billions of people that are existing on this planet that don't exist in the spirit realm. They're not alive in the spirit realm, and therefore they cannot receive a rhema word, and therefore they cannot live their life to the fullness. Remember in John 10, 10, Jesus said, that The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life, and life more abundant. And so how does that abundant life come? It comes as a rhema word. And so that's how you live. That's where life is. Hallelujah. In the rhema word for every day. Thank you, Lord. And so Revelation 22, 1 tells us, Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. And so that's the picture of that. It's flowing from the throne of God. That pure water is flowing. The water of life is flowing from the throne out of the temple and the spirit realm. It's flowing. Every day it's flowing. There's no drought in heaven. Hallelujah. That river is constantly flowing. And, of course, we could go further and know that there's trees at the side and the, the leaves of the trees is for the healing of the nations. Hallelujah. There's life. And so it's the water of life. And this is where you get the water of life. It's by hearing the rhema word from God. Hallelujah. And so I hope I am stirring up in you a desire for the rhema word of God. This is what you need to believe in your heart. Now, the key to Christianity is that you've got to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. Hallelujah. That's how you get everything in the spirit realm. You have to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. If you don't believe it in your heart, but you're confessing it with your mouth, you won't get it. And if you're believing it in your heart, but your confession's different to what you believe in your heart, you won't get it. The two have to match up. 
This is why the enemy has fought the faith message so much. Because this is how you get anything from God. The rhema word comes from heaven. The word of God comes from heaven. And it comes into your heart. Now, do you reject it or do you receive it? Is it planted in the soil of your heart? Does it start to grow in your heart? Because if it does, now you have captivated that. Hallelujah. You've captured it. And it's starting to grow. And the consequence of it growing in your heart, when you believe that, you will start to say that. Hallelujah. And we know that Jesus told us that for you to have your prayers answered, you have to believe that you've received it. You can pray for 25 years asking the same question, but if you never come to the point of believing that you've received it, you will never get it. The way that your prayers are answered are when you believe that you've received it. And we started with Joshua. Right at the beginning, Joshua, the captain of the host said, See, I've given the city to you. And yet the city was locked up. It was an enormous city. It was impregnable. But God said, see, I've given it to you. Hallelujah. And so you've got to see the answer to your prayer. That is the way that you receive in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And for people that are intellectual, they reject this. They cannot get their minds around it. But you see, Christianity isn't intellectual. It's spiritual. It's your spirit that you talk to God, you communicate with God, and it's your spirit that you receive from the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And then it has to come out of your spirit into your soul. So believing. Hallelujah. And it's up to us to be sensitive enough to hear what God is saying for us and for others. And we were talking about intercession beforehand. Intercessors have to pray on behalf of people that can't do this, that haven't developed faith, that don't have a relationship with God. And the only way that God can help them is through you. And so many times we have to believe for other people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so hopefully that picture helps you to get this concept that the word of God is flowing from heaven. And it is flowing continuously. But it won't do you any good unless you get under that waterfall and you have a container. The container is your heart. The true understanding of Malachi 3, verse 10, where it says that when we bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that God will pour out a blessing so great that you cannot contain it. The word there in Latin is the word benediction. And benediction means good teaching. So when you bring your tithes, it means that God opens up the eyes of your understanding so that the good teaching that you are sitting under starts to penetrate. The word starts to be planted in your heart. It starts to grow. Hallelujah. So if you're waiting with a wheelbarrow for God to open the windows of heaven and pour out money, well, you're wrong. He's going to pour out understanding. Now, if you obey that understanding, the consequence could be that you do become rich. But it's because you're applying God's principles. Hallelujah. Because wisdom, not only does it bring uh, being rich, but it brings good health and long life as well with it. Hallelujah. And so that is the way that God answers you bringing your tithes. I hope you are all tithers. If you're not, you are missing out. That's the reason why you have not been able to understand. Now, the other day, uh, I have a radio in my van, and uh, it's normally set to Radio Stoke. But for some reason, when we uh, jumped in, it wasn't on Radio Stoke. And so my radio has an automatic search button. So you press that and it sifts its way through 
all of the uh, stations and then you've got a choice and and so when radio stoke comes back up again you click on it and it comes back onto the radio hallelujah and so that's what we had to do but um because i listen to radio stoke uh, most of the time when i'm in that van certainly uh, between eight o'clock and ten o'clock in the morning and between four o'clock and six o'clock at night uh, i will recognize the voice of those presenters and so i could manually go through the radio listening to the sound of the presenters voices until i recognize the voice of a presenter from radio stoke now i'm using that as an example for you in terms of in the spirit realm because you've got to be able to do that with the voice of the holy spirit also some years ago i learned that the um the people that work in banks in the uk the way that they um are taught to recognize fraudulent notes bank notes is that they spend a lot of time with the genuine notes they don't spend a lot of time looking at the fraudulent ones they just spend a lot of time with the genuine ones and so for you to recognize um, demonic spirits the best way is for you to spend most of your time with the holy spirit so you recognize his voice hallelujah and so you will start to notice a distinction between the voice of the holy spirit and any of god's angels and you will see a, a distinct difference with demonic spirits we're not going to go into that this time. We might touch on that on the last one. Hallelujah. So the key, what I'm teaching you over these six weeks, can be condensed down into you spending as much time as you can with the Holy Spirit. In prayer, in praise and worship. Uh, and the consequence of that should be if you are given an opportunity to prophesy or to minister on behalf of the Lord, what should start to come out is um, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so, again, one of the illustrations I've used is if we were to take a sponge and a bucket of dirty water and put the sponge into the dirty water and pull it out and give it a squeeze, what would you expect to come out of the sponge? Dirty water. If you take a sponge and another bucket filled with clean water, you put it into that bucket and you pull it out and you give it a squeeze, what would you expect to come out? Clean water. So what you spend your time with is what goes into your spirit. And when you are put under a bit of pressure, that's what will come out. And so if you miss everything else, just catch this. Spend as much time as you can with the holy spirit hallelujah and that will help you to develop strong faith hallelujah because faith is actually being convinced that you've heard from god you can trust what god has said and when you're convinced that was god that's what causes faith to arise because faith is certain now faith is being certain of the things that you've hoped for there's a certainty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. So, just to remind you, if you want to be spiritually alive, if you want to do everything that God's called you to do whilst you're on this planet, you need to receive your rhema word every day. Hallelujah. Every time you have breakfast, let that be a reminder to you, I need to receive the rhema word. If you drink orange juice in the morning, as you start to drink that orange juice, uh, let this connection be made right now. I need my rhema word. I need it more than I need the orange juice. It's more important to me than the juice. Hallelujah. 